Hey guys, today I'm going to share with you four different ways you can control your lights in Home Assistant. In the first part of the video, we're going to look at lights versus switches. In the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how you can actually control your lights in Home Assistant. We're going to create a simple dashboard with four blocks using a grid card and a light card. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and let's roll the intro. <music> In my own home assistant setup, I control lights in four different ways. Zigbee bulbs, Wi-Fi bulbs, switches, and relays. Now let's look at them all and let's look at the pros and cons of each of them. So first of all, Zigbee, you need to buy a gateway. And this gateway can cost something around 20 pounds to 80 pounds. This gateway normally is hardwired into your router, so you're gonna need a free ethernet port. All your bulbs are able to connect to this one gateway, so you have one unique access to the network. This is really good when you, if you have poor Wi-Fi coverage around the house and you can't use Wi-Fi bulbs. In my own personal setup, I've got little devices and I've got Philips Hue devices. They do, both have two different bridges. I also use a Combi 2 bridge, which is a Zigbee bridge that you can actually use to pair devices from different manufacturers. Wi-Fi bulbs might look the same, but they're slightly different. They actually connect directly into your network, so there's no need for a gateway. This could be one of the cheapest ways to actually get started as you don't need to purchase additional hardware. I would advise this approach for anyone that has considerably good amount of Wi-Fi coverage wherever you place your bulbs. Now the obvious con is your Wi-Fi blind spots as you might put this in locations where you might not have a good connection to your Wi-Fi. That's normally not a problem because your Wi-Fi bulbs don't transmit much data anyway. In my example, I managed to purchase a LifeX bulb for around 20 pounds during Black Friday, and really I didn't even need a hub to connect it all up. So is Wi-Fi any better than Zigbee? There's a big debate and a big argument about that, but let's keep that out of this video for now. Thanks to Home Assistant, you can mix and match Zigbee devices and Wi-Fi devices at the same time. You could use both together, and you can experiment which one you prefer to work with. Now switches, in contrast, they replace your physical wall switch that you would normally have at the wall. And this wall switch, actually requires electrical attention and you're gonna to need to be either very comfortable with doing it yourself or you need to hire a professional. That's one of the biggest cons. Another con of switches is actually that some of them need a neutral wire, which not all the homes have, depending on where you're located and when your home was built. There are also other options without a neutral wire that you can find in the market. In my example, I'm using a Sonoff switch and that switch actually connects into Wi-Fi and uses a neutral wire, but that wasn't a big problem for me. It actually only cost me 15 pounds to buy one of these and 15 pounds to install per point. Switches are actually very cost effective if you use them in the right way. In my kitchen, I have 11 lights and, and replacing them all would have cost a lot of money. Some of them actually were impossible to replace with how they have a unique style and fitting. For, so for 30 pounds, I managed to control 11 lights and I've got a free gang switch, which I replace seamlessly. And anyone that comes in the house can actually turn them on and turn them off when actually knowing that they're smart. I've also integrated them into home system, allows me to run automations or scenes as I wish. So the biggest difference between switches and bulbs is that actually you can really control your switches from the wall and you'll still be able to control your lights for your smartphone, where if you turn off, uh, you have a bulb and you, and you have a, a normal switch, if someone turns the switch off, you can't control the bulb anymore. And that's gonna completely kill all of your automations and soon it will get quite tiresome. Now, you can also get bulbs in addition with switches if you wanna achieve colors. Also, that's what I use in this room. Now, another option is relays. And this option is a bit of specific option if none of the above actually work out for you. Now, this relay that I'm talking about is a Shelly One relay. It's a Wi-Fi gadget that sits behind the electrical circuit somewhere. In my example, it sits in the uh, front porch light. Now this acts in the same way as a switch, but you can use an existing wall plate switch and that gives you the advantage if you wanna keep the exact same wall switch that you have. Maybe perhaps you're a bit OCD and you wanna keep the same across all the house. You just wanna try out with one device or perhaps you don't have a neutral wire at the switch. So it's easy to put one of these Shelly devices up somewhere maybe in the ceiling and you can actually get it all working. Same as a normal switch, you can use the wall plate anyway, and you can use Wi-Fi, the Shelly app, and Home Assistant to control it. So you get the same benefits 
as the switch. Then again, in terms of the downsides, you do have electrical work involved and as switches, you can't control lights individually. So if you have three lights, for example, on one single switch with bulbs, you can control the bulbs individually. So you can turn one off and keep two on, but you can't do that with uh, switches and relays. It's either all on or all off unless you also use bulbs in combination and some automations. And if you're getting value out of this video specifically, then like the video and that will help me out with the YouTube algorithm. My next video, I'm gonna share five automations to control your lights in Home Assistant. Now, if you don't wanna miss it, then I suggest you can subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified as soon as that video gets released. If you prefer a written version of the video, I have links down in the description below to go to my blog. Now let's dive into Home Assistant and let's look how this actually looks. So now I'm in the Home Assistant integration page and as you can see, there's 96 different type of light integrations you can actually use. So obviously it can't cover all of the lights and all of the integrations, but I'm gonna just go briefly show you what I've got. So as you can see from the screen, these are my integrations. To get to the integration page, if you're not familiar with Home Assistant, you can, from the home page, navigate to configuration and navigate to integrations. Once you're inside the integration page, you can actually see some of my light controlled integrations. So as you can see, one of the most famous integrations I have is a Philips Hue integration. This integration is very straightforward, it's auto discoverable, and this uses the Zigbee gateway to actually make the connection. As you can see here, I've got 25 entities and each entity represents a light or a motion sensor that paired into the Hue app. If I click on the entities, you can now see the whole list of all of my entities. Now, you're gonna to need to note down which entity is which room, so you know which light you're gonna control in the dashboard. LifeX is a Wi-Fi smart bulb, and this requires no gateway, and it actually, I've only got one entity because I'm just trying it out. I've made a video about it if you wanna check it out, and I'll link it, link it here. I have my Shelly relay here, and I use this for my garage door, but also for my downstairs loop. Now I'm gonna show you how you can actually create this uh, simple, interface in Home Assistant so you can control all of your lights. I'm going to be using one light out of each category that I actually talked to you about earlier. First thing you'll need to do is to go on these three dots and click Edit Dashboard. At this stage, we need to go and click Add Card. Now we need to search Grid and select Grid. Now what we'll be selecting here, we'll be selecting four lights. So we just go and search for light. And as you can see here, there's a plus sign and you can add another card and we're gonna have another light. And we're gonna carry on until we've got four. Now that we have all of these four cards, we can go back and assign each card to the entity that we actually want to use. So as you can see here, there are numbers, number one, number two, number three, and number four. This will allow you to select which one, which light you're controlling. So go to grid number one, and let's look at this entity, uh, and let's replace this with which, what we need. So I'm gonna pick it in the downstairs loop. Then you move to number two, and you can replace the kitchen and the cupboard with something else, for example. I'm gonna keep that there. I'm gonna go to number three. I'm gonna use a LifeX bulb, which is this bulb here. And the fourth one, we're gonna replace that with the Huey Play one. Now to make this look a little bit better, we can go and make it as a square. So click on Show Code Editor. And you can see here in line number two, just type in and enter and just type columns and then put your column in and give it a space and we can specify, for example, one, if you want them all in the in list in this way, we can do them by twos, we can do them by threes, by fours, or any way you want, right? So in my example, we're gonna do by two. So click show visual editor. So if this button over here, you can actually move the cards around the board. So let's say I wanna move this first, I can just do like so, and I can position it back using the other arrow. I can delete it using the delete button. And that's it really. So we just save this and we have our nice 
dashboard. Now to exit edit mode, we can close it right here. And now let's focus on these two. The downstairs loo is a relay. Hence, there is no brightness indication, as you can see, because we can't control the brightness. We can only either turn on by clicking it or turn off. The same as with the kitchen under the cupboard. This is actually a switch, so I can only turn it on and off in exactly the same way as with the relay. Now, if we look at the bottom hand side here, we actually have two bulbs and with the bulbs, we can actually control the brightness and we can control the color of the bulbs. In this example over here, in this room, I'm using the LifeX bulb. I can turn it off by clicking this button and I can turn it back on. As you can see, the light adjusted. I have this dial that I can move and you can see the percentage brightness moving. We've got 50%. We can put it back up to 100% and we can put it back at 5%. So by hard pressing on one of these bulbs, we can actually get and see more options. We can see the current brightness. So we can regulate it here in the same way we had that dial. We can actually change the color temperature as we wish. And we also have all this, this beautiful color palette. So we can go and change the colors respectively, as you might see the colors flicking around in my background. And we can also use effects, for example, like color loops and pulses, in case we have some sort of party or theme going on. We can also simply turn on and turn off with this button over here by turning off. All of the options disappear by turning on, they come back. We have a, a last time this was triggered. So we have a just now, but the light updates constantly. And we have a history here tab, which we can click on and we can actually see the history. So we can see who turned on the light, when, if you have different users, and you can look at uh, history and see when this light was available. And basically it's the same functionality with the Hue Play lamp. Uh, you can just hard click and you can turn it on and you can see all of the same settings. So it doesn't really matter what manufacturer you use or if you use Zigbee or if you use Wi-Fi, it just looks the same once you've configured it up in the back end. Now, if you enjoy this video, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy the next one, five automations to control your lights in Home Assistant. This will give you a starting point to where you can actually build your own automations, you'll understand how it works. This video is coming out very, very soon, and as soon as it does come out, you'll see it right here somewhere, and you can actually click on it. In the meantime, you can like and subscribe to the channel, and stay safe, and see you in the next video.